So this is a video that illustrates the uh, development of a flow duration curve and a load duration curve for the Can River at Welch Village, looking at uh, total suspended solids and quantifying sediment loads. This uh, particular spreadsheet, which is available on the Moodle site, can be played around with and uh, one of the purposes of this uh, video is to illustrate the effect of the imperfection in the relationship between discharge and TSS in terms of quantifying the uh, uncertainty of the sediment load which is going to be estimated from the data. All right, so what we start off with here is uh, raw data, which is uh, shown in this uh, slide. The gauging station is a U.S. Geological Survey gauging station, and uh, the station number is given there in column B. Uh, the data are lined up. C gives the date, and D gives the discharge in cubic feet per second is the average discharge for that day. And in this uh, sample data, um, there are, uh, the data runs from 2005 through 2013. There's a bit more data than that, but some of the data is faulty because there was ice conditions, and so the estimate of discharge is poorly defined. And also, there are some cases when there's missing data. So we'll take care of that when we calculate the flow duration curve. The plot that's shown here is the discharge versus time for the Cannon River at Welsh for that period of time from 2005, basically July, through 2013. And you can see the kind of variability in discharges. The discharge, again, is in cubic feet per second. So the maximum discharge for that period of record is about 20,000 cubic feet per second. And there are some times when discharge is very close to zero or absolutely equal to zero. Um, all right, so that's the data. Now we need to figure out um, how to construct the flow duration curves. So I go to a different slide here or sheet. And now we still have uh, the column with the USGS designation for the station. We have the uh, station number, but now what I've done is I've sorted the data from smallest to largest based on the discharge. So column C has the date and the associated discharge with that, but you can see that the dates are not in con um, consecutive order. Um, so the discharges are in order from smallest to largest. So you just use the sort um, tool in Excel to choose those two columns, the date and the flow, and you do the sorting based on the flow itself. So uh, next to the flow, I put in a number which ranks the discharge value in order from one through the maximum number of discharge values. In this case, there are 2,877 uh, values of discharge in the data set. Uh, so you just put a 1 here, and then, of course, in Excel, you can just add 1, and uh, you don't have to uh, ba basically copy and paste. Uh, you don't have to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You just basically put it the, uh, this row 4 would be E3 plus 1. And then row 5 would be E4 plus 1 and so forth. So you can just copy and paste to have that done. And then um, the uh, percent exceeded exceedance is given here in this column. And here all I've done is I've taken the value 1 and subtract off the rank number divided by 2887, where 2887 is the number of... Uh, values in the data set. Okay. Um, so now uh, this is going to then be used to construct the uh, flow duration curve. 
And what I would do for the flow duration curve would be to plot the flow in, in column D versus the percent exceedance. It's not percent, it's decimal value of exceedance uh, from column F. And that is uh, plotted in this graph right here. So you can see that uh, it's not really percent exceedance that's labeled incorrectly. It should just be fraction of exceedance. And the maximum value is 1, minimum value is 0, of course. And so for the smallest discharge, which we saw in the database as 139 cubic feet per second, um, has a exceedance value, has a uh, value of 99.9% uh, probability of it being exceeded in any given day. And the one with the sl lowest uh, exceedance is a uh, discharge of about 20,000 cubic feet per second. Okay. So that one's going to have a percent exceedance close to uh, zero. Okay. So that's the uh, flow duration curve. Fairly easy to um, set up. Now, when you get a data set, the issues that you might run into are that there might be missing values um, or there might be values that are not, uh, that you're not confident in because of things such as heavy vegetation in the channel or maybe ice on the channel. And those can then cause uh, problems with uh, having confidence in the measurement. And so it's always good to go through the data and uh, eliminate those values so that they're not considered in the flow duration curve calculation. So that's easy to do. You just basically uh, segregate those out of the data set and only use the good values in calculating the uh, ranking and then, of course, the flow duration curve. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, stop this video right now, and the next thing we're going to do is to look at the uh, load duration curve.